Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Yadal Sanya and in this video we are going to solve the question sum of lower and upper triangles. Okay, so the question is pretty easy if you know how to use loops on matrices. Okay, so let's try to understand what the question is trying to say. So given a square matrix of size n cross n, you have to print the sum of upper and lower triangular elements. So upper triangle consists of elements on the diagonal and above it. The lower triangle consists of elements on the diagonal and below it. Okay. So let's try to understand with the help of example and let's start. So I've written down the first test case example which is given to us in the question. So you have to find out the sum of upper and lower triangular elements. So this is going to be your upper triangular including the diagonal, primary diagonal and this is going to be your lower triangular section of this matrix. So if I write down over here the upper triangle, so that would be 6, 5, 4, 2, 5 and 7. This is your upper triangle and the lower triangle will be 6, 1, 2, 7, 9 and 7. Fine. This is the upper and lower triangular elements. Upper and this is your lower triangle. And you have to find out the sum. Let's find out the sum. That would be 6 plus 5 plus 4. That would be 9 plus 6. That is going to be around 15. 15 plus 2. That would be 17. 17 plus let's say 7 will, will be equivalent to 17 plus 7 plus 5, 7 plus 5 is going to be 12 and 12 plus 17 is going to be your 29, right? And this is, go this is going to be the sum of your upper triangle and let's say to find out the sum of the lower triangle. So 6, 6 plus 1, 7, 7 plus 2, that would be 9, 9 plus 9, that would be 18 and 18 plus 7 plus 7, that would be 14. So that would be 8 plus 4 that would be 12 and this is going to be your 32. So the sum of lower triangle is 32. And in the output, first of all, you have to print the sum of upper triangle and then the sum of lower triangle, right? So 29 and 32, if you have a look at the output, it says 29 and 32 for this example number one. Okay, so that is what the question is trying to say. It is pretty much simple, right? So now let's try to understand what can be the approach for this. So now if you focus on the upper and lower triangle, I have understood that, okay, we need to uh, use for loop in order to solve this question. Then that's a good thing because we simply need to iterate over the elements of upper and lower triangular, right? So basically you need to iterate over the upper triangle and uh, iterate over the lower triangle to get the sum of the elements. So now I'll be writing down the indexes as well. So this will be zero, one and two, and this is zero, one and two. And now let's say if I'm going to use the nested for loop for this upper triangle. So one of the outer for loop will be having a loop variable. Let's say I, this I will be iterating over each and every row. And there will be one more uh, loop variable that is inner loop variable that will be J and it will be iterating over the elements column wise, iterating over the elements of a particular row. Now let's say in the first row, how many elements are there in the first row, which elements are going to be included 0 comma 0, 0 comma 1 and that would be another one is 0 comma 2, right? So you can see that the loop starts from i and j that is 0 and 0. When the loop starts for this j, the value of j is similar to what the value of i is. Basically, the j starts from the row number. Row number is 0, so j starts from 0. Similarly, let's say if i is equal to 1, how many elements are there? I can say 2 and 5. So the elements are 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2. Similarly, over here you can see i and j are equal right i and j similarly let's say if i is equal to 2 i can see the last element is included that means the loop variable will be starting from the last that is from this 2 so basically which elements are there so i can see 2 comma 2 over here again i and j are similar right so based upon this observation i can use two nested for loop so the outer for loop will be treating over the number of rows i is equal to 0 till, till i is lesser than n now inner for loop will be treating over the elements. So it will be starting from for j is equal to i to j is lesser than n. And you can simply use a variable called as up and keep on adding the elements array of i comma j. Fine. So this is your upper triangular sum. So I simply included all the elements that are starting from i until n. So this is the logic for finding the sum of upper triangular elements. Similarly, let's try to observe uh, for the lower triangular elements as well. So now over here, I'll be again writing down the indexes. So that would be 0, 1 and 2. And over here, this is 0, 1 and 2. 
Okay, so now let's say to it have the loop variable as well over here. So this is the loop variable i, and this will be iterating over the number of rows, and this loop variable will be iterating over the number of elements. So i starts from zero till n, right? So I can observe that for the first row, the value of j, which I, which is the element which has been included inside your lower triangular, that is zero comma zero element. Now let's say if i is equal to one, so how many elements are included? The elements one and two will be included. That is from zero till one. So j goes from zero till one. So zero comma zero. That is, I mean, which element will be included? One comma one will be included and one comma. So in the second row, so in the second row, which elements are going to be included? So it will be one comma zero and one comma one will be included, right? So now you can observe the ending of the element. Which element is ending? So I can see whenever i and j are ending, till that only I need to include inside the sum. See over here, I can see i and j. Whenever i and j are same, I will not include the elements after it. Similarly, when i and j are same, I can see no elements are included after it, right? So let's say if i is equal to two. So which elements? I can see two comma zero. All these elements, right? That would be two comma one and two comma two are the elements. So I can see again how many elements are included until the value of i and j are same. All the elements are included. So j will be starting from zero and it will be going till the value of i. So that is how it is going to work. So let's write down the for loop. So the outer for loop will be starting from i is equal to zero. Two i is lesser than n, and the inner for loop, the inner for loop will be starting from j is equal to zero to j is lesser than or equal to i, right? And now let's write down the uh, variable and let's add the value to it, right? So array of i comma j, low plus is equal to array of i comma j. So these are the uh, two for loops, different different sections of upper and lower triangular elements. And if you write down it inside your logic, inside your solution, then this is going to work perfectly fine. So I can see over here, I have two different for loops, right? For, uh, one, one is the for loop for the upper sum and another is going to take the sum of the lower triangular, right? So what I can do over here, instead of having two different things, I can simply have the iteration over the entire matrix. And if the particular element is the part of lower, then I'll be adding that to the lower triangular sum. And if that element is the part of upper, then I'll be adding it to the upper triangular sum. So how to find out, how to identify whether this i comma j is the part of upper or lower triangular, right? So if you observe based on this for loop, I'll be showing you the observation. See inside this upper sum, all the values of j, what is the range of j? I can see j starts from i and it goes to j is lesser than n, right? So I can see each and every time the value of j will be greater than or equal to i. For any i comma j, whenever the value of j is greater than or equal to i, then that means that element will be added to your variable up. Similarly over here, if you observe the uh, comparison between i and j, let's say this is your i comma j. Now we want to identify. So I can see the range of j is from zero to i, right? So each and every time you will be able to see that the value of j is always going to be lesser than or equal to i. So if you find any kind of i comma j and you find out the value of j is lesser than or equal to i, then that means that element is the part of the lower sum. Okay, so this comparison is only required and you can add it, uh, add this comparison if condition inside the iteration. So let's uh, add that part. Okay, so what I'll be doing, I'll be having two different loops. i is equal to zero to i is lesser than n. And now one more for loop that is for j is equal to zero to j is lesser than n, right? So I'm iterating over the entire matrix. And now you can observe over here, diagonal elements are the part of upper and lower sum, both of them. So if I find that if i and j are same, then I'll be adding that element to my upper and lower sum. So array of i comma j will be the part of upper and lower sum is equal to array of i comma j. Fine. So now let's try to handle the this part. If I find j is greater than i, so what I'll be doing, I'll be adding that element to my upper sum. So I'll be checking if the value of j is greater than i, then that means that sum will be upper. 
so my add element will be added to my up variable and now if the value of j is lesser than i then that value or the element will be added to my lower sum array of i comma j fine and now what i can do i can simply end the for loop and this is the entire logic this is the entire code okay so this is the entire algorithm very simple simply simple for loop or iterations are required right so i hope you understood how to solve this question the entire logical part and entire implementation part so now let's try to code this uh, entire thing and let's uh, get this question done right so let's start so this is the entire implementation part and i have written the entire code in java but the same can be implemented with the help of the algorithm in any different language okay so this is your sum triangles method a uh, matrix has been passed as an argument and the length of the matrix right so now what i'll be doing i'll be having two different variables upper and lower i have iterated over the entire matrix and now if i find if i and j are same that element will be the part of upper and lower sum and if i see that the value of j is greater than i then that means that value will be the part of your upper sum and if i find that the value of j is lesser than i then that so that element will be the part of your lower sum right so this is the entire iteration and now as the return type of this method is array list so i have created one array list and i have just added the upper sum and then the lower sum and then just simply returned the array list so that is the entire implementation part so now let's try to uh, submit this and let's see the acceptance and we can see that the problem has been successfully submitted so i hope you understood everything about this question and let's try to analyze the time and space complexity try to think about the time and space complexity so the time and space complexity of this approach comes out to be order of n square because you can see a single iteration over the entire matrix is required and the length of the matrix is n square so the time complexity comes out to be order of n square and the space complexity comes out to be constant because you are not using anything except variables and variables does not depend upon the size of the test case so the space complexity in this case comes out to be constant as we can see it is matching with the expected time and space complexity so that was it for in this video i hope you really enjoyed the solution and if you really enjoyed the solution do hit the like button and share it with your friends and to comment down your approaches in the comment section so that was it for in this video i'll be meeting you in the next video thank you